Hey y'all, this is Ben Roberts with Rock the Registry reminding you to think like a test maker, not a test taker. Uh, welcome to today's video. I'm super excited to be talking to you about ways to evaluate the lateral elbow examination. And before we jump right into it, don't forget to uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you're interested in more content um, similar to what we're looking at today. So the question for us today is, how do we evaluate a lateral elbow image? And uh, as always, I wanna give a shout out to Wiki Radiography for providing these open source images. I'll provide a link to where this is found online. But I'm just talking specifically today about the lateral medial lateral elbow. So um, the central ray entering from that lateral aspect and exiting on the medial aspect of the anatomy. I'm looking in particular at Merrill's to guide some of the discussion. So we want the central ray ideally to be perpendicular to the joint, regardless of the type of image receptor that we're using. Um, and then proper collimation will need to include that open elbow joint, right? Again, evidence of the central ray being perpendicular to the joint, um, as opposed to being uh, perpendicular to a space other than the joint. Uh, three inches of the distal humerus, three inches of the proximal forearm. We want to make sure both the humerus and forearm are in contact with the image receptor. This may require some creative engineering, engineering particularly if we're doing portable work for a trauma. Um, and we want ideally to have a 90 degree flexion of the elbow, um, largely because uh, this allows for the olecranon process to be seen in profile, as well as the elbow fat pads are going to be least compressed and uh, particularly evaluation of that interior fat pad is uh, important for how the radiologist will make a diagnosis. So let's look just a little bit more at that. So one of the things that the radiologist may be evaluating for or the reviewing physician may be considering is what we would call an occult fracture. This is a fracture that may not be readily apparent. It's hidden um, by overlapping anatomy or superimposition. So this is why we have the radiologic sign that's called the fat pad sign or the sale sign. Many radiologic signs have creative names because we're describing what something looks like, almost like the way that people say clouds look like certain things. And this uh, fat pad sign or sale sign is when that interior fat pad starts to fold away from the joint. It looks like the sail. Um, so this is evidence of joint effusion as well as an intraarticular fracture. Um, in adults, it's primarily, I believe, a fracture of the radial head. But don't quote me on that because I am a technologist. So if you have comments on that, please leave them below. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about it. I'm not going to provide any additional information on that. Uh, but the reason I want to mention this as a technologist, even though I don't necessarily need to uh, make a diagnosis off of the image, I do need to make sure that the image is capable of guiding diagnosis. And so one thing that's very critical on our elbow images, regardless of how um, we're positioning, uh, is um, making sure that our technique sufficiently shows soft tissue structures. So we want a technique that allows us to appreciate that anterior fat pad. So in other words, being able to see the anterior fat pad from the QC center or from wherever we're looking at the images digitally um, is critical to making sure that we've taken an appropriate image of the lateral elbow. If the fat pad's being obscured either through the technique or through positioning, the image may need to be repeated. All right, and before I sign off, and I just wanna say thank you, and I also wanna give a shout out to a content creator here in Memphis who uh, a friend of mine introduced me to. He's actually related to this fella. Um, he's calling himself B Squared Musical Things and or B Squared's Musical Things. And I love particularly this video, I Count by Fives. It's perfect for uh, teaching young kids how to count by fives, which can help them a lot with both multiplication and division. So please leave your comments, uh, subscribe and share. Don't forget to let your friends know about it. And definitely check out uh, B Squared's Music's Musical Things video, I Count by Five, I really enjoyed it. Thanks.